Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the tail command. Now, the tail command is typically used to list the last 10 lines in a file. So if you just have a look at what's on my desktop, I've got three files here. The first file we're going to work with is lines.txt. So if I just cat that out, you can see that it's the numbers 1 to 20 each on a separate line. So if we just type in the tail command and then give it a file, so lines.txt, we get the last 10 lines of that file displayed. Now we can also select the number of lines that we want to display. So if we type in tail with the dash n option for number of lines, and as you can see, that's the same option that's used in the head command. And then we type in say three, and then the file name, we get the last three lines in that file. We can also use tail with the dash c option to list a number of bytes. So let's just say we want the last four bytes in that file. Give it the file name, which is lines.txt. And we've got the last four bytes in that file. You can do this for multiple files. So if I just type in tail and then lines.txt and then more lines.txt, you can see that I get the last 10 lines in each of those files and we've got these titles here indicating what the name of the file is. Now another cool option that you can use with tail is the follow option. So if I just clear the screen and I'm just going to ls, what I'm going to do first is just run this Java file. So tech jar test. And what this program is actually doing is it's just adding a thousand onto the previous number and then printing it to the screen and it will continue to do this until it hits 40,000. So let me just stop that and clear the screen. So I'm going to run that again, but this time I'm just going to send its output into a file and we'll call it count.txt and I'm going to run that in the background. So once I run this, I'm going to use tail to check on the progress of this currently running program. So let's just use tail with the follow option and I'm going to use another option which is w double dash pid and I'm going to enter in this process ID here but I'll explain that a little bit later and we need to enter in the name of the account file and hit enter. So as you can see tail started off by showing us the last 10 lines in that file and it's continuing to show us lines as they appear in that file. So it's following the end of the file. Now what's just happened is tail has worked out that the program that was running has come to an end and it has terminated itself. Now what actually happened was this is the process ID of this currently running program. So by supplying tail with that process ID, it's able to track the state of that program and it detected that the program had finished running. So therefore there's no reason for tail to remain open and it terminated itself. So that's what the double dash PID option does and all it stands for is process ID. Okay, so if I just clear the screen and let's just delete that count file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Java again to run that Java program. Uh, what is it? Test.jar and again I'm going to redirect its output and append it to a file called count.txt and run that in the background. Now if I type tail and use the follow command follow option again and supply it with count, what I can do is check on the progress and if I just break that, what's happened is I have stopped tail from running but if I look at the jobs that program is still running in the background and my terminal is now free again for me to do something else with it so I don't know let's just uh, ping 
google.com. Oops. There we go. And as you can see, I can do something else. So as you can see, this is quite useful for utilities or programs that would generate a lot of output because now what I've got is a record of everything that that utility or program did in a file and I was able to use tail with the follow command just to check up on progress um, it's quite useful to use this with a utility called make if you're compiling something as you maintain control of your terminal while the process just runs in the background and you have got, like I said before, your file with all of the output saved. So I hope you found that useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.